You are about to listen to the Never Daily Podcast. This is the biggest thing since the Zaproda film. So many questions. I don't have any answers. But please, please don't stop listening to the Never Daily Podcast. Right off I the hate bat, the new nine one one. You know what's fun? You know what, Kit? What's funny is there's psychology that says that everything that we say has a bit of truth in it. And you know what? I got to be honest. There's no way that you could not feel something about it, and that's okay. Yeah, I feel. I don't know, betrayed, I guess. Is... <laughs> hey, you know what you should do? You should mention to Jack. You should just say, hey, guess what? I'm not doing 911 anymore. <laughs> Phase one complete. Phase one complete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that um, most people are taking that change very well. Um, yeah, there's there's a couple that aren't. It could Whatever. have went one of two ways, and most people are going the first way, which is positive. So, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, and you only listen to the Never Daily podcast by Eleven Fifty Nine Media, we have another show, a little show called Nine One One Calls Podcast, and the ho- the co host on the show just changed from Kent, who's been doing it for the last I don't know forty fifty episodes, something uh, like that. To Jess is the new host of the show, co-host of the show. And and, killing it. And killing it. And killing it. Um and 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 change is hard. Uh change change is hard. Change is easy for us. (laughs) (laughs) I want to get ahead of something though, um, real quick. Let me pull up Patreon. I want to address, I want to, I, cause I knew this was going to happen and I want to jump in front of it right now. Uh, a, a lady, uh, a, a beautiful young lady left a comment here. Let me find it. Okay. Danielle says, <clears throat> this has given me traumatic flashbacks from when Jack and Op were all, I love yous and changes are the best. And then Jack left. And then she goes on about just kind of, talking about that same thing but that's not what's happening here i'm not going anywhere i'm happy at 1159 media uh i, I love all my co-workers and i tolerate op so um <laughs> <laughs> uh this is literally we looked at 911 and if you look at 911 in the beginning We've already went over over all this. We did it on the nine one one call. There's no use in doing it. Like the dynamic was off for a show like nine one one calls, and it needed somebody that wasn't me, somebody that's got a more dry sense of humor and can keep you on track. And Jess is those things. So it was best for everything. It's best for the show. It's best for me because I have more time now to work on TCK and actually put work into the never dailies, which you're going to see today. And, um, it's just, um, every, everybody, if you keep an open mind, I think everybody wins. Yeah. No, I, and, and, and I, I, there's nothing more to say. I think that's, that's exactly right. I think that's exactly right. I, I'm, I'm, um, I have a newfound respect for <clears throat> those podcasts that are out there and the, they're, they're done by the pros. So like, like, you know, a podcast where you've got like four or five legit a list comedians sitting around on couches, right? Because how it's so difficult to to maintain your own your own character uh in real time while other people are doing their bits around you it's it's so hard. like like the operator just and I'm that's it's it's a true sign that I'm not a pro is I didn't know what to do with my hands. Like with Jack, it was easy because 
um, he was a straight man. And that, that's just, that's how that was. And so. What are you calling you, me? With, with you, it was like, I think the op lost, lost his way with, with like not, cause the op isn't funny. The op is an idiot. And you should know I'm taking all of this as a compliment. Honestly, well, well, I, I, I'm not mad. I'm not sore about it publicly and um, on social media. I'm not going to be sore about it. And I'll just keep all my feelings to myself. But I'll say and I'll just say that I'm taking this as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> that was encouraging. That was encouraging. Uh, no, uh, it's fun. Just, uh, what fun? What? No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. you go ahead. Because I didn't know what I was going to say. There was quiet space. I knew I had to fill it with something. I was just talking, and I didn't know what I was going to say until it came out. So when I said whatever I said just then, and then you interrupted me, not even I knew what was going to come out next. So it would be great if you had something planned here. I fun do. Fact. What fun well, fact? What's the fun fact? Fun upcoming thing. Um. We've we've reconnected with somebody that uh, we've worked with in the recent past that, that uh, and we've got some exciting Halloween content coming up. I don't know if we can really talk about it much, but I, I I'm excited and and the listeners should know that there's some there's some con- there's some fun content coming out that um, collab collab. Is that the right word? Yeah. Collab. Yeah. And I'm excited about that. Um, one thing that 1159 isn't known for is video content, and so um, this is this is new territory for us to be in, and it's exciting with the content that's coming out. I got a new little device called an Orba. You ever heard of an Orba? No. It looks like like it looks like a. Um, like something that some busker would have. Hockey fuck from 2074. Yeah, and there's a, b- a speaker on the bottom of it, and then each one of the things on the top is a touch a touch pad. And if I if I touch them, <laughs> and it and so you can make whole songs. If I push the middle button, this is fun for a podcast. So you can make like, oh, oh, yeah. (laughs) That's fun. Okay. Is it? All right. I'll put that down. (laughs) Isn't that just an adult version of like every kid's toy? Pretty much. Yeah. And the only way it's an adult version is they made it all black. If it, it kind of it feels like um like who really used to speak and spell the right way? Nobody. Nobody did. Who really used to speak and spell? I did. Here's a do you want to know a wild fun fact? The only word you wrote over and over was G O D. God. 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 Um, Quarter. Here's a really interesting fact. (laughs) God. Quarter. (laughs) Here's a fun fact is that for for like new age synth and like the the sound of the speak and spell is is highly sought after as far as like like getting that sound for for musicians to use the sound of the guy talking from the speak and spell uh, also you rarely hear it or rarely hear it the exact same as it was on the speak and spell because it is patented and so people have tried in the past to replicate the sound of it and been sued <laughs> because the the circuitry, the process to produce the voice from the speak and spell is is patented, and you can't just go and like make your own speak and spell voice that's that that uses the same process. It's wild. 
See, I don't know a lot about the speaking spell. I didn't have a speaking spell. We played with sticks outside yeah. and like caught tadpoles and crawdads in the creeks and stuff. So like the only way I can relate to any of this is like, I remember the only memory I have of speaking spell is watching one of the Leatherface movies. I can't remember which one it's in and Leatherface has a speaking spell. Yeah. And he keeps getting it wrong because it shows a person and I know you're supposed to type in what it is and he keeps missing it up because he put, he keeps typing food whenever have it's a you, person. Have you ever heard Stephen Hawking's like synth voice, you know, like when he would Yes. That is about as close to the speak and spell voice as, as you can get. Um and and even that's a little bit different. Um, but, but yeah, it's really, a, it's a very unique voice. Uh, I don't even hey, care I got a question. what I'm talking about. So what about religion? Since I'm oh. not very religious and you are, uh. um, if Stephen Hawking went to heaven, would he still be in that chair? No. So would he be walking around and, and, and talking? Well, it depends on what, like in most Christian faiths. There's the process of resurrection, and so now, hold it, on. It really hmm? would he have that body in heaven? Per my faith, so would it uh, just be walking around all gangly and like a zombie, just like looking weird and like yeah, but like still. Per my faith, n right now, no, he doesn't even have a body. He's just a he. He has been released from his body, and he's in a spiritual form. At some point in the future, there will be a resurrection where he will be resurrected to a perfected state. So, like, it's like it'll be like Stephen Hawking, like two point oh. Yeah, it'd be, where well, when it comes to Stephen Stephen Hawking, it's gonna be like ten point oh. But yeah. How well, mad would he be if it was like he was fucking shredded and ripped, but he was still in that chair? He still couldn't move his legs <laughs> or anything. <laughs> like he still had to talk to the speak and Stephen Hawking 2.0 is still chair bound with his head cocked to the side, but he just looks like <laughs> just Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> and his yeah. voice sounds like Vin Diesel. If you could be, if you could be reincarnated as any person who like, right. f just let's go off, let's be shallow. Let's just go off physicality. Off if physical. you could be reincarnated as any, as he, in, as any person, who would it be? Probably Rihanna. Why? Well, I'm just curious. I just feel like I'd be a really good sassy black lady. She is. She's also a billionaire. Did you know that? Yeah. But if we're going dudes... Dudes, probably mm, that's a good question. If I could be any dude reincarnated as any, so, so do I get their mind? Or is it just body? Just, just the body? I, yep the the body and the gravitas that comes with the. I don't know what gravitas know. means. Does that mean like how the uh, gravity affects? Like what is gravitas? <clears throat> Let's just say you're sitting in a coffee shop and you look over and there's Liam Neeson. Something about him just draws you in. That's gravitas. Like just the ability to suck the air out of the room just by your presence kind of thing. I would probably go. I saw I was at Chipotle one time and I saw this guy. Uh, it was at the airport. There was this guy and I was like, wow. That dude is cool, and he had really great shoulders, and um, I could just tell, like, the girls probably really dug this guy. I would probably pick that guy. You So you'd pick the guy from Chipotle? Yeah, he was ordering in, at Chipotle at the airport in Orlando. Okay. He was Cuban. Oh. Beautiful. Okay. Man. I don't care about the gravitas. Oh, I just right, want the let me... abs and what I have since learned since the last time I talked about them. I just want the abs and the cum gutters. Let me, that let me thing. tell. That's what somebody said on Supercast, I believe, uh, was those are called cum gutters. What are what are those? Cum gutters. I heard I heard the term, but what is what is that? The V thing. 
Oh, the V thing. The, the yeah, lower cum gutters. Because they, if you blow a load on your stomach and <clears throat> start stripping down, they like kind of keep it. The gutters, they like keep it running back towards your genitals. Cum gutters. Okay. And I didn't t- coin that phrase. I saw it. Somebody wrote about it on. Somebody did a write up. Mm, yeah. But I would probably that pick sounds- that guy. So. Here's where here's where I he, he, this will make you this make this will make you like rethink th- those those they're just not as attractive when you go by their anatomical names so the lower abdomen right there like right below the belly button yeah that's called the hypogastric region yeah and then to the right where you get the angles coming down the, those are the right and left iliac regions so not quite as Attractive is the term you used, or fun. And I used to have cum gutters. Mm. What <sighs> Worked hard for them. I had a really great set of cum gutters. And now I've just got a roof. <laughs> no gutters. <sighs> um, Do you ever have cum gutters? Yeah. Yeah. I still have a, I still, like, I can feel I still have a pretty decent six pack under my, fa- yeah, I've got an interest, I gain Everybody weight does. interestingly. Well, no, I gain int- weight interesting, like, you've seen me, I have a kind of like the Ethiopian distended stomach, and it's embarrassing, but here's what's weird, is I had the same body type as my brother Jake. Jake went to a doctor and was like, I'd like to get liposuction, and they said, we can't do it he's like why and he said they said because look and they put their hand on his abdomen and kind of moved it down and they're like you see how there's like there's no fat on the outside all of your fat is visceral fat underneath your abdominal wall wrapped around your organs that's why your stomach sticks out it's not the outside fat like the meat shelf you know the meat curtain yeah fat like we don't have a ton of that like he it's wouldn't distri- be good to eat. No, well, no, until you like cracked open my internal oblique muscles, or you know, get into the rectus abdominis. If you cut in through the tendinu- tendinous inscription, then then the, yeah, you got some fat in there, bro. But that's the fat I need to lose. I need to lose the fat that the visceral fat that's wrapped around all my guts inside because that's why my stomach sticks out. So, so if fat you flex, you can still see an outline, even if your stomach. You got so it looks like you got yeah. roid gut. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll show you. Look. Okay. So if I, so you can see. Oh see? wow! Look at that. We are doing this. Yeah. See. Yeah. But not a lot, and not a lot going on as far as fat goes. Look no, I this. got a little bit here. You are bald <laughs> like a baby. Just. Yeah. No hair. I keep sleek. I keep my body sleek. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so I can't really get liposuction. Well. Did I just show everybody my nude stomach? You did. And your nipple. We could see one nipple. Yeah. You got good nipples. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, man. You do too. I've I, we 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 compared nipples at Dauphin Island last time. Yeah, yeah. I've got little nipples. Yeah, yeah. You've got little They're nipples. Fun. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. How if about I you, didn't, Chase? I can only ask you, Chase, because the other way, the other one is sexual harassment. Let's see your uh, let's see your nipples, Chase. Chase just used his hands. It looks like Chase is is describing that he has Genoa salami sized nipples. I bet Chase there's, has. I'm gonna say quarter sized nipples. Yeah, there's I'm a gonna, reason why my nickname in high school was Canadian Bacon. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the areola, then, not the yeah. nipple. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just. <laughs> Just as clarifying, yeah, areolas, that's what we're talking about. I don't mind a big set of areolas. Prefer them. On a woman, but, like, I don't really you know, have a, a preference on a men. On a men, I have no thoughts. I say the more the better. 
the more nipples? Not like just two nipples, but the more of those nipples, the better. Oh. <sighs> yeah. Um, I, I will I, say you are just so shockingly less hair than I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm kind of surprised at how little hair I have, too. I don't know why that is. Like, I don't have chest hair. I... I can grow an okay beard, but no, you know, it's not as effulgent as I'd like it to be. I'm hoping that when I get resurrected, it's a little more, you know, girthy. Chase, it's funny that your name was Canadian Bacon because mine was Lil Smokey. <laughs> I don't know why, though. I I never figured it out. <laughs> eh. Mm. Mine was Lil Samba Bitch. <laughs> that was your nickname at home, too. <laughs> Kindergarten, I it's... wrote Lil Samba Bitch Chungus. <laughs> they're like, that's not your name. I liked how in the in in the uh, Patreon comments, your mom piped up. Did you see that? To clarify the eight, her age when you were born. Yeah, she or was like, when, I, I thought she was 16 when I was born. She wasn't, she was 15. 15, when I was got born. pregnant at 14 with you. And yeah, had you at 15. She, hell is old as time down here in the South. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom is amazing. She's, she, so, yeah, she had me when she was 15. Is Which, it, d- is it offensive to you that I have thoughts of just like hopping on a plane and going and visiting your mom and maybe letting you know that I'm there, but just like chilling with your mom? No, like it's I, not. I think she would love that. Oh, I would just like to hang out in town. That town is so fun. Every corner has like Massey Ferguson's for sale. Like every corner had some piece of farm equipment for sale. That was, I loved it. So I went and hung out with mom at her work here about a week and a half, two weeks ago. And there was a guy there. I'm not going to say his name, but he was great. I talked to an older man and he was like, basically like the town historian. He was telling me that back in the seventies in the peak of George Jones, George Jones, George Jones's fame, like the seventies, eighties. And George Jones was like a notorious alcoholic, right? He he was Mm. late. No show Jones. I think they no show George or something. He was Notorious for missing shows because of his alcoholism. And it turns out that one of his guitarists is from my town of Rockcastle, Kentucky, Rockcastle County. And from Red Hill in Rockcastle County. And George Jones, and I didn't know this until they told me, would come to Rockcastle County to dry out. To, like, get off the booze for a little bit. And this guy that works with my mom down there would run George Jones around Red Hill on a motorcycle in the peak of his fame. And he really? would just hang out at, in Red Hill, which is like a little bitty, it's it's not a town, it's wooded area with a bunch of farms and, and just, so there he would be in this little backwoods town in Kentucky running George Jones around on a motorcycle to the gas station and stuff. <laughs> That's so wild. What was that? <laughs> oh man. Well, and the mayor of the town, we've covered him before. He was a bus driver for 38 special before yeah. he was the mayor. Yeah. Had to come be mayor because he got fired being the bus driver because the cops found out that he didn't have a CDL for 20 years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he said, quote, things were just getting a little too hot. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was amazing. Rolled out of his office in the mayor in the mayor's office, uh, wearing a Carhartt shirt with like mustard stains on it. Man, that guy was everything. I sat there, oh, I love that. and and that same place you're talking about, where me and you sat talking to him. That's where I was. Town hall. Um, uh, <laughs> it's town hall. Town Everybody hall smoking yep. <laughs> inside. <laughs> <laughs> what's hilarious is like everything seemed to have a just a veneer of dust like nobody had touched any paperwork or anything the only things that didn't were like the ashtray had less dust on it 
than the other stuff and the Coca-Cola cans. Like yeah. those two were read, you know, they're very, they're used quite a bit. The rest of it seemed to be a bit untouched, which I mean, that would be an amazing podcast is just knowing like, what are the, what's the pinnacle of drama on a daily basis in, in that, in that town hall, you know? I would just, yeah, I would love to set a camera up there and just talk to people as they come in. Because, I mean, while I was sitting there in town hall, in city hall, uh, at the front, just talking to the guy that worked there, I mean, and we talked for a long time. And people were coming and going to pay their water bill or whatever, because that's also where you pay your water bill. And they would kind of buddy in. Yeah, I remember when so and so robbed that that bank down there. Yeah, I got caught, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, George Jones running around already. He'll come in the gas station all the time, just drying up, drunker and shit sometimes. It so wasn't always drying up, but he's supposed to be playing a show up there in Richmond. And <laughs> and they said he was too drunk, so he didn't show up. And then this guy was talking about running him around Red Hill on a motorcycle to take him to the gas station and stuff. George fucking Jones. <laughs> and to put that in perspective for Young Bucks, that's like... Imagine the smallest town you've ever heard of, and then imagine today somebody running Taylor Swift around on a motorcycle to gas stations and her just crashing into a little farmhouse in the <laughs> woods somewhere run by the sweetest old little country couple that don't even care that she's Taylor Swift. <laughs> Um, what did, uh, oh, we have a bit of a, this is, this isn't a change. We have a bit of a refinement on something that you do every Friday. Do you want to explain that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> One of the benefits to 911 calls, uh, the change in 911 calls is I have more time to work on other things. So from here on out, hopefully there might be ones, one or two that where I get another one from the internet. But the <clears throat> the creepy pastas are going to be either written by me or Teresa Hunter. And I today the creepy pasta was written by me, and it might be terrible. It might be terrible. It might be worse than the bad creepy pastas I've read from the internet. But at least this way, it's my fault. You know what I mean? Like I'm to blame. Because it never feels good mocking other people's creepypastas, because I know that they've put, and maybe mine are even worse, but at least it's my fault. <clears throat> so I'll read this, and then you guys give on. I don't want any coddling. I don't want any. So if you hear this and you hated it, let me know in the comments. If you loved it, tell me. Don't spice it up. Let me know what you think. And I'm excited. I'm excited ab about about that about this because it'll like motivate me to. I'm gonna listen to the whole story rather than like just you know talk to Chat GPT and tell you know. Yeah, you won't do that, but I appreciate you saying it. <laughs> I will. You watch. So I wrote this one, and it's called "No Son of Mine Will Be Average." No son of mine. Will be average. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Do you do you want boom ghost boom sounds and all that with these, or do you want to just? Yeah, you can do it at the end. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. No son of mine will be average by Kent Chungus. Twenty one thirty seven. Because just Kent Chungus was taken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh four nine one two. Twenty one forty seven oh four nine one two. I feel like that might be your military number. You said it too too efficiently. All right, no son of mine will be average. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Action. No son of mine will be average. That's what my father always says. He was an overbearing, hot-tempered religious dictator in our household, and my mother cowered in his presence, as did my two, as did my two sisters and I. Other kids would be out playing hide and seek or kicking a soccer ball around, but not me, not my sisters. To the books, he would say, "No son of mine will be average." 
You know, I got to give it to him, though. Because of my strict upbringing, I became top of my class. I wish I could say that I hated him because he was a nothing and that he was trying to make me walk a walk that he himself had never seen the path of, but that wouldn't be true. The man was a lawyer and a good one, too. Not only that, but my mother came from wealth. Dad had secured a well-paying, respectable job and then married into money. If anyone had a right to pressure his children, it was probably him, I guess. However, he had also taught me to hate. Being from a small town, that probably isn't all that surprising to anybody. He taught me to hate anybody that doesn't look, think, or believe like me. Our people were superior, the chosen ones. That's what he said. When I finally got out of his house in that small town that you have never heard of out in the middle of nowhere, I was 24 years old. I was so glad to be out of the grasp of that tyrant. I didn't just leave my hometown, though. I left the country. I wanted to see the world, despite how much I hated everybody living in it. They were living in sin, living for premarital sex and booze and drugs and material things. No son of mine will be average. That was the last thing the old man said to me at the airport. Typical. Not a hug, not a goodbye. It was a threat. That's basically what it was. I chose the Hamburg University of Technology in Germany and began majoring in urban planning in the urban planning planning program. Not bad for a small town boy like myself, huh? There, for the first time, I began mingling with other people. Some of them thought and looked like me. Some of them didn't. I stuck to those that were mirror images of myself and my beliefs and developed an even deeper hate for those that didn't. Then I found out that there were groups of people that thought like me. They were strict on their dress code and their haircut. I liked that. It was something I was familiar with. Hell, it was almost comforting, that oppressive feeling. Nostalgic, even. Germany was 10 years ago now, and I've made a pretty nice life for myself in Sarasota County, Florida. Sure, I'm having to live with a few friends in order to knock their rent down a bit, but it frees up funds for my newfound passion aviation. A pilot. That's something dad could be proud of. I've told my buddies here stories of my dad, and they bust my balls all the time about him when I'm running around the house frantically looking for my keys, usually because I'm late for one of my aviation classes at Huffman Aviation in Venice. No son of mine will be average, Mo, they yell at me while laughing. They started calling me Mo when we moved in together. I suppose there are worse nicknames. On the upside, my father wouldn't turn his nose at these guys if they had ever met. They look and think like me. They hate the sinners. They're model citizens as far as he would be concerned. That brings us to today. I've been working towards this for months. I've put in the hours, the work, the studying, the books, the tests. Tomorrow, I will finally get to pilot a large passenger plane, a Boeing 767. No more tiny single prop planes or light aircraft. All of this work has finally paid off. Even better, my friends are going to be able to, even better, my friends are going to be there to see it. Abni iam yakum mutsawat mutawasatan, my father used to say. Today is September 10th, 2001, and my name is Mohammed Atta. Tomorrow, Everybody will know that. Dang. I love that one. That's amazing. It's like a it's like a gallows version of um the rest of the story. A gallows really? version of the rest of the story. <laughs> Yeah, you know how you he always I I ripped off a lot of the rest of the story stories for um for uh Hugs podcast and like like I love that. You know, you tell the whole story until the very end um and then you tell them who who it was and everybody knows, you know. I wanted I to that. my goal was to make until the last like two to three sentences of the story was to make them think this was some racist white trash dude. And that's kind of where I was with like, it, it shifted. A My couple goal times. was to piss off conservatives for most of the story. And then yeah. right at the end, piss off liberals. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job. 
I was pissed off at the end. So, so, um, uh, no, that was really, yeah. Halfway through the story, I thought you were, you were going to like tell us about some guy that, you know, ended up working at Dachau or Auschwitz or something. Yeah. Well, that was the point. All yeah. that stuff, by the way, I said fact, like historically factual. That was really Muhammad Atta's life, upbringing, where he went to school, Germany, all that stuff. True. Yeah. That's, those guys, the, uh, oof. so much of what they did was just like common, like flight school, common, you know? Yeah, they went to cr- actually a bunch of flight schools there in yeah. Florida. Um, N- then they had the whole Microsoft simulator Yep. You know, flight simulator stuff. And boy, that is a crazy hobby. I'll say hobby. Some guys use it. I don't know. I guess you could use it. I don't know if you could actually land or fly a plane, but I believe all I know is I managed some apartments in a a city one time. And there was a guy who never left his apartment. And when I when he'd open the door, I'd see in the back, he had like a full blown cockpit, like almost looked like everything you would see with the airplane inside of a commercial airplane cockpit. And I was like, what is that? And he goes, oh, I'm a user interface designer for Microsoft flight simulator. And so he would create the, the realistic user pan, the interface panels for different airplanes that they would use in the, in the game and I was like, is it really accurate? And he's like, it's insanely accurate. Like the 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 cockpit that you can build based on all the parts that you can buy, all the you know, accessories and stuff. You can you could learn how to fly a plane in the comfort of your own bedroom. Yeah, I actually asked Joe the pilot if people that are really into those simulators, could they I was like, man, if somebody had one of those right and they played it all day and not for a long period of time, would they be able to get in the cockpit of a plane or a helicopter and be able to get it off the ground and fly? And he said, yeah, he thinks he could. That's how realistic they are. That really, that, I mean, amazing. not that they would be good at it, but they could probably get it off the ground and maybe land it. Landing, I've, I've learned from Joe, is where most of the skill is with yes. aviation. It's not getting it off the ground or even flying it. It's landing. It's getting back to the ground safely. There was a TV show. Uh, I believe it was produced in Canada. I'm trying to remember the name. I believe it was like Flight flight or Planes or something really basic. But it was, it was all about like they'd go to air shows and they, you know, all everything plane related. And Sam 2.0 was huge into planes when he was a little kid. So we'd watch it all the time. And there was an episode where they they trucked like five just civilians to a uh, flight simulator, like one of those ones where like the screens in front of you or the actual, you know, you're seeing the outside world. You know, it's very, very realistic. And the test was with with control tower in your ear, how many of these five could successfully land the plane with 120 fake passengers in it, you know? Um, I believe all of them crashed. Yes. Yeah. That's reassuring. <laughs> That's sobering. Yeah. <laughs> I will, I, I would go, I, I think we're getting better though. I fly by wire is ridiculous. Like how much when they're in the air, how much they don't have to do. Yeah. You know? Like they can kind of set it and forget it. I could do that. I, I mean, it's not apples to apples, but I had to register my my drones when I had drones. I had to register them with the FAA. You have to register your drones with the FAA, and and the drones that I had, you could set coordinates, and then it would just take off and it would go and go to those coordinates, and you could tell it which which way to shoot photos, and and it, you you could basically tell it go go do a lap of this castle and take photos and come back to me. You could draw coordinates around a town or your neighborhood. You could do a neighborhood watch. Like if you had five drones and they were all just on little pedestals, you could do a, you could have a 24 hour neighborhood watch. Just one goes up, does a pass, films everything, comes back. 
Next one takes off. Did you get rid of it when you almost decapitated that child in the cornfield? Yeah, I was pretty close to when I wrapped. I, I, I called it on drone footage. I was at that same corn maze last night, though, and I was thinking about it as I was riding on the tractor to get pumpkins. Um, how grateful I am that I don't do that anymore because not the drone part and me killing the girl. Yeah, that was pretty bad. But before I did the drone footage, which, by the way, to catch a whole corn maze shot in one shot, my drone was up 3,000, 3,500 feet, like so high you can't see it anymore. You can't hear it. You can't see it. Also, I was in the flight plane of landing planes to the airport that was just down the road. <laughs> so that was weird. But anyway, before the drones, they would take me up in a helicopter and I would have my Canon 80D at the time and they would take me up high enough that I could take the photos of the the corn maze. Um, but here's where it's weird is you don't real one, the doors open all the time on the helicopter. So that's freaky enough. And you're you're tethered, but it doesn't. And then to get the shot, you can't just like lean out of a helicopter and take those shots. So they lean the helicopter sideways and then you're taking the shot. So all of a sudden your tether just goes and it's just holding you at maximum, you know, and my head and everything is outside of the helicopter. And that's when you discover that the rotor blades are forcing all of the air in existence to get the helicopter in the air because your head is taking a beating like you can't imagine and hats don't stay on your head and glasses don't and it's hard to hold the camera stay it was weird it was scary you would <laughs> you would have been horrible in vietnam yeah you would not have made it <laughs> nope those guys just like held on to like a fucking helicopter by the hand and they're like, yeah, we're good. And they hit it a few times and they take off a half a mile in the air hanging by their, they just got their wiener tied around the bottom of the, <laughs> and I was also, you were talking there. I was thinking about, we used to ride in V-22s and that's a special type of aircraft, but the bottom, the back of them, the door would stay open, the back door. And this is not a job that would work for you. Because those guys, the machine gunners on those V-22s, they had a 50 cal mounted on the on the on the lip of that. And then they had they wore a brace that was mounted the back of their like a it looked like a like a repelling brace, right? A, yeah, yeah. And it like had a, a rope that would go off their back that would mount to the floor of the V-22. And that he, that 50 cal kind of swings out. Of the, mm -hmm. and then they kind of do that Michael Jackson lean. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So they're yeah. hanging out the back of the helicopter, <laughs> hanging on to the, to the handles of a 50 cow. <laughs> so when you're driving, they're kind of like this. So like, here's the door and they're looking down at the ground. Yeah. And that would not be a job that, cause I remember like whenever we'd be going places on deployment and stuff and that guy's hanging out the back, we're like, it'd be such a fun job. I've got to fucking carry this goddamn gun everywhere. And he just <laughs> hops on and throws on a pair of aviators and fucking beautiful <laughs> hair blowing in the wind. <clears throat> the yeah, but you're right. In order to get any kind of shot and see through both iron sights, the, the plane, the, whatever vehicle you're flying in has to be able to bank a bit. Otherwise, you're just shooting at the horizon mostly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to have kind of a downward angle. <clears throat> to, yeah, and it just looks so much fun. But I would guess that's not a job you would volunteer for. I I would. You know what? I don't know what job I'd be best at. I know what job I I think I'd be really good at would be the one where I'm like, you guys go ahead. I'm gonna hang out here and I'm gonna surprise attack the oncoming army that's that's on our on our tail. And they're like, okay, and they move forward, and I get down in the foxhole. And I just pull the pin on like a couple grenades. Why is there's a problem uploading the video files? We will continue to retry the upload. Please double check your network connection. My network connection's fine. I didn't get that message. <clears throat> I didn't either. I think it's I think it's just on my end. 
but uh, I've been having network connections all morning, so I'm hoping. Let me see. Let me just check. Sorry, guys. Let me just check my packets. And your jitter rate. Yeah, check the jitter rate. It looks okay, so we'll just continue. You what know are you what? running right now? <laughs> okay, don't answer. His bit rate? <laughs> I'll look. I'm I've, running. I've got access. Let's see. Show stats. I'm running around 2.66 megabits per second, which isn't mm. very good. I mean, it's, it's kind of sucking. Yeah. Need to get uh, probably around. But to see jigger packet. But the audio's okay. No, the audio I'm running 193. I don't know, guys. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. Nobody cares. Um but I do I do have I did bring something. Do you want me to... By the way, great story. Like probably one ah, of the best we You would have said and... that no matter how it was. You're you, you're setting a scary. You know what? You deserve a little bit of music. Right. Everybody, 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 everybody. Congratulations! We just go. made a Skrillex song. <laughs> <laughs> Call nine one one now. <laughs> 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 People really caught on to him quickly, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this is just the same song over and over and over again. Oh, they we could put all of Skrillex in a little little box. Um, I I I uh I heard a story the other day, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it was intriguing enough that I thought I'd see if there were some other ones out there like this. And so I'm gonna I'm in, I'll tell you. You can tell me which one you'd like to hear more about. I'm going to list off a, a, a series of medical, n- n- not just medical mysteries, but these are like, what, how did you contract that kind of thing? Um, so think like sorority 1984, you know, like how did you, what is that in medical, the, the sorority, medical like a sorority, like a female sorority where girls do pillow fights and stuff and their yeah, panties. Yeah, like, th- like they go. They do pillow fight, pillow, panty They go there fight. and like, doctor, I've got a rash. And the doctor's like, we've never seen that before. Like that, that kind of a mystery. <clears throat> All right. So here's the first one. It's, this happened, this happened only in 2013. Um, It's called the sleeping town of Kalachi. Residents of Kalachi, Kazakhstan, began mis- experiencing a mysterious illness around 2013 that caused them to fall asleep suddenly, sometimes for days on end. I can that, relate to this guy. Here's another one. The Toxic Woman. In 1994, there was a woman named Gloria Ramirez, and she was brought to a hospital, and her body seemed to emit, what is it? Her body seemed to emit toxic fumes that made the ho- the, that made uh, hospital staff ill. Yeah. We've all ate okay. Taco Bell. <laughs> Okay, here's the next one. The sweating sickness in the 16th century England experienced outbreaks of a mysterious illness known as the sweating sickness, which caused intense sweating and death within a few hours. How about this one? There was a widely circulated story that claimed that a World Health Organization study predicted the disappearance of blondes, blonde people within 200 years. I can get behind that. <laughs> it's sort of a reverse Nazi move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've said this before. I, I encourage interracial relationships so that we all end up one superior race. 
I think that was honestly, I think that was sort of the og- argument was that uh, the homogenized, the the more the more advanced our technology, the more flat the Earth is, you know, and so how the more homogenized our our genetic pathways become. Here's another one. <clears throat> the Morgellons mystery. Some individuals claim to suffer from Morgellons, which is a condition where they believe fibers, granules, or other material is going out is coming out of their skin. Though many medical professionals consider it a form of delusional parasitosis, or basically it's not happening. Here's one more. Oh, two more. I got two more. The Mad Gasser of Mattoon. (laughs) In the 1940s, there was a small town in Illinois that experienced a series of gas attacks by an unknown assailant causing various symptoms and widespread panic. So that's what we call my daughter Sawyer, the Mad Gasser. What's, it's funny because, like, this isn't just, like, people are like, do I smell natural gas? Like, these are gas attacks. Like, somebody is attacking individuals and parts of the town with gas. Like, I would guess probably dangerous gas. <clears throat> so did any, Oh, and here's one more. Here's a story about a gal in Nashville that had been kissing a guy at a bar. And she subsequently got his number and then she went home and she woke up the next morning with a raging rash on her face. She went to the doctor and the doctor said, hey, what have you been doing? And, you know, went through all the things. Have you switched up your lipstick or foundation or, you know, any makeup, you know, cleanser or anything like that? If you introduce any new foods in your diet. And she said, no, she's like, I, I don't, I don't think anything has changed. <clears throat> so they swabbed it, the rash, and they send it off for cultures. And they, they came back and, and, you know, in the, during the interview, she had said, you know, they, they had asked about communicable diseases. Have you been in contact with anybody? So she lists off this guy, you know, and, oh, I was at my grandma's house and, you know, I kissed her on the cheek and I was here and I was there in this bar guy, you know, and all that. So they knew about it and they took the cultures. They came back and they said, we absolutely need the name of the person that you were kissing. And she's like, why? What's what's going on? And And the doctor said, the only way you can get the rash that's on your face is from dead bodies. Oh, yeah. We got to do that one. So they went and explored the mysterious guy's house <clears throat> and they found four dead bodies that he had been eating. That I mean it's pretty much that whole story expounded, but what I didn't know <laughs> you could get a rash from eating dead bodies. <laughs> I feel did did you just have a Chris D'Elia moment? <laughs> what do you mean? You know the moment oh, yeah. on vi- <laughs> the video where he's, he's like, get, "We realize he's in trouble on the like on the episode." You can you can I start can sweating. Snapchat. Like, hold on, you can get a rash from eating dead bodies. <laughs> that story did remind me of I don't know why, but whenever we used to go to Abiza's all the time, the gay club, yeah, um, one of our buddies. I'm not going to say his name, but it was O'Brien. Uh, they were doing one of the the tranny shows there, <laughs> and those were our favorite. We loved going to the gay clubs on that one. They would do the 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 drag shows, and like tranny later that shows. night, we're drinking and having fun and mingling with the gay people. And I look over at one point, and O'Brien is is making out with this lady. Uh, and he's really drunk, but she's got an Adam's apple. <laughs> and we had the most fun. Like, I can't wait to tell him in the morning. Like, I can't wait to tell him in the morning. This is going to be so funny. And he made out and messed around with this dude for the whole time we were there. It was like an hours just stuck <laughs> to this dude's hip thinking it was a chick. 
And we just like thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And then when he woke up that morning, we were just so excited. We were like, hey, buddy, did you have fun last night? He was like, yeah, it was a good time. It was like, yeah, well, uh, do you know that that chick you were making out with and messing around with all night was a dude? And he goes, this is exactly O'Brien's response. He goes, really? We were like, yeah. He's like, he goes, I was really drunk, man. <laughs> and it was just like started eating breakfast. Like, <laughs> didn't give us the satisfaction at all of like being, <laughs> ah, I was drunk. <laughs> kind of makes you wonder if at some point he had realized the, the that possibility. Yeah. Went in Rome. And just rolled with it. Yeah. If there's ever going to be a time to do that, that was it. I fell in love in a hopeless place. <laughs> Isn't that the That's song the you said they play? the only song that on... plays at gay clubs for some reason. <laughs> over and over. I can't hear that song without thinking of... There was this guy there. He was probably 23 that just had the body of like a 14-year-old boy. And he only wore tidy whities And he would dance in this like... On this like... It wasn't a stage. And it wasn't a cage. It was like on an elevated platform in the middle of the bar, and he would just dance in his tidy whities And it was just like, that poor bastard had to dance to that song all night. I fell in love in a hopeless place. <laughs> fell in love. You know what's weird about the cage dancers is you think about, you think about that job. They're they're super anonymous. They're like they're like uh, you know they're they're ornaments in the club. Yeah, they're 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 you can't you're not interacting with. So like they they dance in the cage, and then they're just done doing that. Yeah, <laughs> they go home. It's... And I I mean I smoked at the time I was smoking cigarettes. I would smoke I'd smoke cigarettes with that guy. He's a cool dude. It was just weird standing out there. He's in tidy waddies, barefoot. And I'm just like, so, <laughs> to catch Game of Thrones? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I couldn't believe they beheaded so-and-so. <laughs> standing in his tidy waddies. It was a good time. Abyss was the most fun. <sighs> especially... God damn, especially if you like I fell in love in a hopeless place. Because that was... If you do go there is it still in existence um let me see while you see i did um discover that the 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 story about the necrophiliac actually is a fictional rumor that was started on may 8th 2001 there's there's no actual legitimacy to it Now you're sharing a picture. It is still going. There's this. Oh wow! Look at that, Ibiza or Ibiza, Ibiza. Wow! Look at that. They look so happy. It was so much Every... fun. They've... Oh, drag look, Halloween coming up. costume this... on the twenty seventh. They're having a drag Halloween costume contest. You should go to give us an update on how the bathrooms are these days. I wonder if Toddy Waddy guy is still there. Well, he would be in his like thirties now. Um, there is there is actually a rash though that has been um uh, associated with dead people to a certain degree. There's a story that was published February thirteenth, twenty seventeen about a woman named Jacqueline who reportedly got a dead people rash from a morgue worker that she met on Tinder mm. has to be true. And that <laughs> ruins any chances of a second date. Yeah. Like, and you know, if you're dating a morgue worker on from Tinder, you know that they're going to throw dumb jokes at you all night long. Like I almost, I almost, I almost didn't go on this date because I was so busy slicing left. <laughs> uh, uh, should we make out? Um, there are a lot of cases though, of like allergic reactions being triggered by a kiss. Have you ever heard this one's this one's real? Have you ever heard of incompatibility between a man and a woman because of uh some biological fluids like like his semen? 
There's yeah. cases where women are allergic to their their significant other's sperm and it gives them <laughs> they're like allergic to it. Which I think we just gave a bunch of ladies in a, a great idea. <laughs> they're like, I don't do that because um, I'm allergic. Actually, I'm allergic to it. <laughs> like they're not a, they're not allergic to all sperm, just cert, certain guys' sperm. Yeah, they're like, if it if it um, if it comes out of a can the size of a beanie weenie, then I am allergic to it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um. Anyway, pop isn't long enough to purify. It. I have a, I have a, <laughs> I have a little more on the sleeping sickness. That one's wild because it was, it was from 2013 in Kazakhstan. Um, residents of the village, they'd fall asleep, like I said, sometimes for days or weeks at a time. Sarah, and when Se they, I don't mean to interrupt you. Sarah Seeger in the background said, my husband's sperm gave me a reaction twice. One named Ian and one named Ethan. <laughs> she's talking about children that, oh I was gonna say that like she must have just a really long list of names if we're talking about just the allergic ejaculate. reaction was pregnancy That's that was the joke I, can't, I, I, see, pop. I see how it happened and you're wondering she's where the friends, storks come in she's friends with real pilots and yeah. that's cool uh, she's also probably got the patience of Job because she works as an airline wizard. So she also met Mr. Anyway. Beast and he was a douche. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, have you ever been noticed on a plane? Noticed on like a plane? Like recognized? Like recognized for, as Kent Chungus on a plane? I sat next to uh, two wonderful ladies that recognized me as Kent Chungus at the airport and I had a great flight. It was really cool. And one of them is now a big time listener of the show. Wow. My mom got recognized on the plane. Um, and you have, I never have <laughs> ever. I mean, it's, it can go. I was of, a, it, luckily it went well for me, but I would imagine that could also be a nightmare. Because you're like then stuck with that person. Yeah. Could be hard. I was at a Chinese restaurant with you and you got recognized in another town and I didn't get. <clears throat> yeah, you were sitting right there. He never even acknowledged you. Uh, that was that weird. Was you were right there. It, he, I don't even yeah. think he ever looked at you. I, don't, I shook his hand and looked him straight in the eye and I was like, hey, thanks. And he was looking past you at the crab rangoon. <laughs> Kazakhstan, where I left <laughs> off. Um, when they when the people woke up, my heart hurts. When the people woke up, they experienced a range of other symptoms, including hallucinations or nausea, um, disorienting behavior or memory loss, and it. It it didn't it was no respecter of person. The the condition seemed to affect people of all age groups. By 2016, about 150 individuals had been affected. That's wild. Um symptoms included excessive sleepiness or hallucinations. A lot of the people said that the hallucinations that they suffered from were like snails walking over their faces. Oh. And then they'd get nauseous, they'd throw up, they'd be disoriented. And a lot of them seemed like they were drunk, like the 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 disoriented nature, the nature the their disoriented nature was like they were drunk. They'd fall asleep during uh day-to-day -day activities, totally sleep sleepy all the time. So initially the cause of the sickness wasn't very clear. And so there were just a bunch of theories flying around. But eventually, investigations by Kazakh officials, they pinpointed the likely cause to heightened levels of carbon monoxide and other hydrocarbons in the air. So they were emanating from a flooded, abandoned Soviet-era uranium mine nearby. I don't know. That'll do I it. Probably, yeah, I was going to say, like, oh, crap, everybody's sick. wonder what it could be. 
Maybe the uranium mine Maybe it's that, that we live next to. Soviet era uranium mine. You think it's that? <laughs> that think Soviet that air- era uranium mine kind of sticks out <laughs> as a potential not good for us thing. Do you guys think it's the flowers or maybe it's that <laughs> Soviet era uranium mine? So this this part is is worthy of its own. And I've actually got a thing written up for another Never Daily on this kind of activity. But there's another theory that the groundwater underneath the whole village might have been contaminated by chemicals that were used for military operations in the region. And that was sort of based on epidemiological findings rather than like a chemical analysis. But uh I've got I've got a write up I'm doing on how often we the people are guinea pigs to military testing. Yeah, and then a hundred years later, after everybody involved is dead, they come yeah. forth and go, sorry. Yeah, exactly. That was us. Sorry. Um so they Which I think that is why they have things classified, right? So like, ooh, we made a boo boo. We better classify this and then wait for everybody to die off. That yeah. would be upset and then we'll declassify it. It's weird to me that the Kennedy assassination keeps getting classified over and over. You know? It's it's odd. I mean, it's sometimes fun to remember that our government is full of people. And that those people can be buttholes and that those people like they make decisions because they think they know better, but they're just people. And somebody is like, nah, you know, let's come up with an excuse on why we continue to classify the Kennedy assassination. And then the room's like, okay. And then they just do it. Who do you think did it? Do you believe it was Lee Harvey Oswald from the book depository building? One shooter. I I think the government did it. I think I think the CIA did it. I don't think I mean Lee Harvey Oswald, I think what was probably involved. Um definitely involved. But I, I think the I think the the driving force behind it is much deeper. I don't think it was just some militant you know that happened in Texas, didn't it? Wasn't it Dallas, Texas? Dallas. What yeah. if it was just like a stray bullet from a gender reveal party a half a mile away? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh, one thing I got to tell you about this. Speaking of stray bullets, I got uh, somebody reached out to me, and I'll 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 reveal names and everything. Uh, when it all when it all f- washes out, but they uh, they listened to the hunting episode and they were like, "Have you ever gone hunting with an air rifle?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah. I mean, I was a kid. You know, I shot anything that was shootable with my BB gun." And they're like, "No, no, no, no." And they sent me a picture of a 50 caliber air rifle. Why I does mean, that the bolt. The bullet, the slug on this thing was massive. And they're like, like this kind of a right. I'm like, no, I've never even, holy crap. And there's a tank on it. I mean, it looks like a, a military version of a Nerf gun. It's got this air compressor, compressor tank on it. It's probably 10 to 12 inches long. And they were like, get this. They said, you want one? <laughs> I was like. Heck yeah, I want one. And they were like, okay, do you want the 50 cal or do you want the 0.62? Do you want the 62 cal or the 50, 50 cal? And in my head, I was like, well, I really want the 62 cal, but I think 50 cal ammo is going to be more readily available. So I was like 50 cal. And they're like, okay, cool. Do you have, this is, this is funny. They said, do you have a uh, way to refill the canister? And they said, we figure, I figure maybe it's worth asking because maybe you're, you know, you do have a compressor. And I'm like, yeah, I've got a big compressor. And they're like, what does it do a PSI wise? And I said, oh, it does about 300 PSI. And they're like, oh, 
We'll have to send you a compressor because this this thing you've got to compress to like forty two hundred psi. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I don't know if that's safe. I don't know if it is either, but I am so excited to get a fifty cal rifle. Why are they sending you this? Because they just are really amazing, and there will be. I'll I'll give them a shout out and everything as things progress, but. I was just like, what is happening? They sent me pictures of it and everything. I'm like so excited to go shoot this thing. Anyway, Kazakhstan. Oh, they renamed the town Sleepy Hollow for a while. (laughs) Because everybody was asleep. I went back to the story. I don't know. Oh, okay. I've been to yeah. Kazakhstan and it's uh that that's what it reminds you of even if people aren't sleeping. It's very <laughs> shady and dark and cloudy all the time and cold. It's just like mm-hmm. Sleepy Hollow in the Johnny Depp movie. So the residents of Kalachi were actually offered resettlement uh to other areas to escape what nobody was determining to be the final case, but they figured that, that the area had been contaminated. So <laughs> somebody came in there like, if you want to leave, you can leave. We'll move you somewhere else. Here's moving truck. Uh, anyway, that's what I brought. Do you want a little more music? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, bass, bass. I hear that, and I just, in my head, I hear rattling, and I see a Chevy Blazer. This episode is brought to you by 1159 Media, where if you like what we do, something's wrong with you. Lead us out, little box of noise. Here we go. Bah! Hey. I was supposed to do bye, and then you dropped the like. Okay, let me. Okay. Hold on. I can't find the. Okay, I got it. Wait. You tell me when to drop the bar. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Thanks for everybody for coming. Hugs, everybody. Are you going to say bye, ever? You didn't tell me when. Oh, bye. Say bye. Say bye. Bye. I got I gotta work on bye. It.